Can you mathematically prove the existence of God? A question that blends the abstract with the spiritual, the logical with the metaphysical. This conundrum invites us to ponder upon the interplay of two seemingly disparate fields, mathematics and theology. Mathematics, with its precise language and irrefutable proofs, offers a medium through which we seek certainty. On the other side, we have theology, the study of divine entities, immersing us into the depths of spirituality and faith. So, can we use the certainty of mathematics to establish the existence of a divine entity? Can the precision of numbers capture the essence of a spiritual being? These are the riveting questions we'll explore as we attempt to merge the world of tangible proofs with the realm of metaphysical beliefs. As we delve into this topic, prepare to traverse the boundaries of known logic and tread into realms of profound thought. Mathematical proofs, the bedrock of certainty, provide a solid foundation upon which we build our understanding of the universe. These proofs are more than just a series of numbers and equations. They are the language of logic and reason, the very tools we use to unlock the mysteries of the cosmos and comprehend the world around us. The beauty of a mathematical proof lies in its universality. Whether we're peering into the depths of a black hole, developing the next generation of quantum computers, or simply working out our finances, the same fundamental principles apply. Mathematical proofs are the common thread that weaves through all these diverse fields, providing a consistent framework for discovery and innovation. But what exactly is a mathematical proof? Simply put, it's a logical argument that establishes the truth of a mathematical statement. It starts with a set of axioms, self-evident truths accepted without controversy and proceeds through a series of logical steps to arrive at a conclusion. Each step in a proof is like a link in a chain. If every link is strong, the chain holds. If even one link is weak, the chain breaks and the proof fails. However, mathematical proofs are more than just dry mechanical processes. They are creative endeavors that require insight, intuition, and a deep understanding of the intricate relationships between mathematical concepts. They can be as breathtakingly beautiful as a symphony, as elegantly simple as a haiku, or as complex and intricate as a Baroque cathedral. And so, as we delve into the realm of mathematical proofs, we enter a world that is both profoundly logical and deeply creative. It's a world where the abstract meets the concrete, where intuition, dances with reason and where the mysteries of the universe are laid bare in the language of numbers and symbols. With this understanding of mathematical proofs, we now venture into the fascinating intersection of mathematics and theology. The renowned mathematician Kurt Gödel once attempted to mathematically prove the existence of God. Gödel, a mathematician of extraordinary caliber, is known for his profound contributions to logic and foundational mathematics. But did you know he also ventured into the realms of philosophy and theology, most notably by formulating a mathematical proof for the existence of God? His argument, known as Gödel's ontological argument, is grounded in modal logic and set theory, two branches of mathematics that deal with abstract concepts such as possibility, necessity and the nature of sets. Gödel's approach is fascinating, not just because of its use of mathematical logic, but also due to his method of defining God into existence. In Gödel's argument, God is defined as a being that possesses all positive properties. From this definition, he posits that it is possible for such a being to exist by applying principles of modal logic. Gödel then attempts to demonstrate that if it's possible for a being with all positive properties to exist, then it must necessarily exist. Gödel's approach is complex, it requires a deep understanding of set theory and modal logic and hinges on accepting his definition of God. His argument essentially encapsulates God within the parameters of mathematical logic, creating a framework where God's existence is defined into being. However, it's important to note that Gödel's ontological argument is not without its detractors. Critics argue that the concept of positive properties is subjective and may differ from person to person. Some question the validity of defining God into existence and argue that this approach doesn't provide concrete proof. While Gödel's argument is intriguing, it's not without its criticisms and counter-arguments. The mathematical proof of God's existence remains a topic of heated debate. As we delve deeper into the labyrinth of this debate, we encounter criticisms and counter-arguments to Gödel's approach. The complexity of Gödel's ontological proof is a point of contention for many. 
It's not a simple equation that can be solved with a pencil and paper, it's a complex journey through abstract concepts and intricate set theoretic considerations, demanding an understanding beyond the realm of mere numbers. Counter-arguments revolve around the premise that mathematical proofs should not be applied to metaphysical questions. Critics argue that mathematics, being a human construct, is inherently limited in its scope and may not be capable of answering profound existential questions. The concept of God, they argue, transcends the boundaries of human comprehension and thus cannot be confined within the parameters of mathematical logic. The philosophical implications of attempting to prove God's existence mathematically are profound. If we accept that God can be proven mathematically, we accept that the divine is subject to human logic and understanding. This challenges traditional views of God as an entity beyond human comprehension. Conversely, if we reject mathematical proof of God, are we then asserting that there are limits to human understanding and the reach of logic and reason? This debate extends beyond the confines of mathematics and philosophy, touching upon our understanding of reality, existence, and the nature of knowledge itself. It's a debate that has been ignited by the fire of Goodell's proof and continues to burn brightly in the minds of philosophers and mathematicians alike. As we conclude, we find ourselves no closer to a definitive answer, but perhaps in this very quest for answers we discover the beauty of the journey, the allure of the unknown, and the magic of mathematics and philosophy intertwined.